Anyway, uh, somebody needs to take that movie poster of Great Expectations and they need to change it to Great Expectations and, you know, put the logo in it and all that. Um, great Expectations. You know, we don't have expectations of the work of others because that's the Howie test, right? We're basically saying, you know, we're not selling anything here because it's you and the contract. And that's the case, right? You make your own decisions about your own financial future. But when you're a bird or somebody who's really hungry and you find food and there's an abundance there, there's enough to go around for everyone. And you know that the more people that participate, the more basically it, it reproduces, more value is created. So in some respects, you know, we may have no expectations of the work of others as it relates to, you know, developers and Richard Hart and all that. But I've got huge expectations of you. You've got huge expectations of me. And what are those expectations? We know that we win together. We do not win separately. And to me, I understand that fundamentally, that community is where the value comes from because it comes from agreement and participation. If you think about this, you're taking your labor, right? You work and do something. You create some kind of value. And then you take that, you get paid fiat for that, right? That's a representation. Here's my, here's my gold coin I got um, at um, one of the guys from, uh, where was he? He was from Germany, Heidelberg, Germany. He gave me this coin at um, in Vegas. And I use this as kind of representation of, you know, what is a means of exchange? But it's your labor tokenized, right? What is fiat? Your labor tokenized, right? So you can exchange it, right? You can't, you could exchange your labor. You could say, hey, I'll come cut your trees down or I'll trim your trees or I'll mow your lawn in exchange for whatever service you provide. And that's bartering, right? But at the end of the day, what we do is we tokenize our labor and it goes into your bank account and you don't really think of it that way. It's like kids not knowing where the food comes from at the grocery store. But if you think about it, it's always a representation of your labor. So what happens when we come together and take our labor, which has been tokenized into fiat, and we say, I'm going to tokenize it again, and I'm going to put it together in this common pool, which what is this common pool? But it is this contract. But it's a completely immutable, decentralized pool. You're not giving it to anyone. No one, you know, you're not buying something directly from someone. But you're basically coming into agreement in the community, and that's what creates value in fiat. It's the same thing that creates value in imaginary made up internet money. And in this case, Pulse, Pulse X, Hex on both sides and the incentive token. It's all an agreement. And, you know, Richard is absolutely brilliant to bake in the system state. Why? Because the system state itself is built in marketing. I've said this before, people support what they help to create. If you ever want to be successful in any venture and you've got to lead a team of people you need to think about this very, very deeply. People support what they help to create. Let's say you've got a vision for something and you're the leader. You're like, oh, I imagine this future. Whatever it is, you come up with this thing in your mind and you've got a team of people and you know you can't accomplish it alone, right? So what do you do? You have to engage people in a process that basically gives them ownership, so what is ownership? Well, when you're leading people, you need to listen to them. You need to let them participate. Because when people get their fingerprints on things, they care about them. I don't know if you've ever played uh, Minecraft, but my son plays Minecraft. And of course, I've been known to do a little Minecraft in myself. And boy, when you create something in Minecraft, you want somebody else to see it. You're like, hey, look what I made. Look at this thing. I made this thing. I dug all this stuff out. I built this thing. My son is always coming to me. Hey, check this out, man. And I love that. People support what they help to create. The greatest thing about the blockchain is you're an owner. You put the tokens of your labor into this common pool on the interwebs, right? It's a contract. And you contribute to it and you own it. You don't rent it. You don't, no one does it for you. No one does the marketing for you. It is completely decentralized. And that's the beauty of real decentralization. You don't have to re, you know, rely on the marketing department. Well, the marketing department needs to spend a bunch of money on ads. No, we don't sit back. We actively participate. So prior to the Industrial Revolution, you know, agriculture was the key, right? And I was driving in today and I saw the corn growing in central Texas. And when I was in Michigan, we used to say knee high by the 4th of July. What was that? That was the corn height on the 4th of July in Michigan. Well, it's knee high here in Central Texas right now, and it's like May 2nd. 
What's interesting about this, I was thinking, contemplating as I drove in, the fact that if I was, it was 1790 and we were on our front porch, no industrial revolution, no, you know, no con, uh, no cars. And we woke up because the rooster and the sun was out and Bobby Hexerod walked out onto his porch and stretched out and he looked out on the field and the kids walked around. They're like, hey, dad, what's going on? He says, take a look, folks. And of course, you see this knee high corn. And what is it? It's money, right? Whoa, hold on. What do you mean money? Hold on a second. When you're in an agricultural world, this idea of investing your time and energy into something and then watching it grow, right? That's, that's an analogy we use in investing, right? But what was this? Well, okay, you toil to plant seed and till the ground and do all this stuff. And you hope. You can't make a, a, a seed germinate. That's not your job. How does it do it? It goes from dead. It could be in the middle of a pyramid. They've pulled wheat, Egyptian wheat, out of like Pharaoh's term, uh, yeah, Pharaoh's tombs, and they've grown it. So seeds last. What is the difference between a seed that is just dead and something that is alive that produces fruit? You don't do that, right? You might say, well, I know it takes some moisture and some warmth, but germinating a seed isn't your business. That's, that's, that's something greater. But to think of this idea that you could plant something in the ground and you could watch it grow, and then you think about the harvest, you go, can you control the weather? No. What about drought? And what about all this stuff, right? And so you sit on your porch with your kids and you go, boy, can you imagine if it rains? Can you imagine if it rains a little bit more? Can you imagine what this thing is going to be? And if we get the rain at the right time, you imagine what this harvest is going to look like? That's exactly what we're doing. We've taken our time, energy, effort. We've tokenized it. We've planted it in the ground and we sit on the porch and we look at it and we go, wow, this could be a harvest. And how many, you know, how many acres do you have? Right? You think about your pulse and sacrifice and your pulse act sacrifice. And literally you're sitting on there going, wow. And then Mel Tony comes into the chat and gives you the price and you're like, <sighs> right? But you got to have faith, right? You got to have hope. But this is the one thing that's amazing is that never in my experience of history, or at least my, my lifetime, has there ever been a, 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 something that's happened where it's, you know, when they say it's too good to be true is actually true. Oh, no, that's too good to be true. Mm, no, 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 it's actually true. We see it. Well, yeah, well, Bitcoin did it, but yeah, I missed that. This is a new layer one. It's called the pulse chain. Layer one, pulse chain. It's the cake. System state is the icing. People own a part of their future because they get a double. How many people are invested in their coins, whatever those coins may be, that are on Ethereum's mainnet? They're going to have a copy on the pulse chain. Do you think they're going to care about those tokens? Yeah, if they reach par value. Do you think anybody within our community is going to be providing liquidity for those tokens? Uh, Yeah. You think they're going to have value? Uh, yeah. I think they're going to all par. And I think Pulse is going to go to the Oort cloud.